Hello Electroheads! Listen, we need to talk about all these new electric hypercars. Because honestly, at this point, it seems like there is a new one coming out every single week. I mean, go to a motor show, throw a rock, and you will most likely hit something that costs a million pounds and has a thousand horsepower. And then you'll be asked to leave. And look, I'm not complaining. I love hypercars. I mean, sure, they're ostentatious and mostly pointless, but so is Cole. I like him. Hey! But the thing about this new generation of new electric hypercars is it is quite hard to know just how excited to get about them because it's difficult to know which ones are actually going to happen. And I'm not talking about the Lotus Avias or the Pininfarina Batistas or the Rimax. Those are very real cars from very real companies. I'm talking about all these new hypercar brands who seem to appear out of thin air, promising the most advanced, fastest road car ever made. Ever since that Nikola Motors debacle, I've become a lot more cautious about getting really excited about a car based on a couple of render images. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I'm a mug. But fear not, good people of the internet. I have been in a deep research hole for the last couple of days, and today I'm going to present to you my idiot's guide to this new crop of electric speed machines. Exactly who are these shiny new car brands? What is it that they're promising us? And which ones are actually going to happen? All will be revealed in the course of this video, but please do make sure to first like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. It doesn't have to be a long comment. It can just be like, poof. That, it helps the video. Just, just comment, okay? Okay, let's kick things off with the Hispano Suiza Carmen. Now, if you are a massive nerd like me, you might just recognize the name Hispano Suiza. It's a Spanish car maker that had its heyday in the first half of the 20th century and has now been resurrected by the great grandson of the company's original founder. Coincidentally, the company has also been resurrected by an Austrian car designer who claims he bought the rights to the Hispano Suiza name back in 2010. This resulted in a very strange moment at the 2019 Geneva Motor Show where two completely separate companies unveiled shiny Shiny new cars badged as Hispano Suizas. Hmm. But never mind that, check this thing out. I love this car and I don't love it because it's got a thousand horsepower or it can do naught to 60 in under two seconds. Everything on this list can do that. I love the Hispano Suiza Carmen because it's got mother wheel spats. Oh yes, look at that rear wheel just poking out so cheeky. Now those spats along with that sweeping rear end are both homages to the Hispano Suiza Dubonnet Xenia which sounds like something Gwyneth Paltrow would name a child. Oh, this is a good one. This is one of my favorites. But it's actually a beautiful luxury car from the late 1930s. Honestly, why are wheel spats so rare these days? They're so cool. Oh, I just Googled it. Safety reasons, apparently. One thing I am a bit less sure about the Carmen is this gauge cluster. What is going on here? This looks like a speedometer from a pirate ship. With just 19 units of the Carmen being promised, this thing is sure to set you apart from all those Lambo and Ferrari driving dorks in the car parks of Monte Carlo. But is it actually going to happen? Well, I think this one actually has a decent chance of happening. There are actual videos of it driving around an actual track, which puts it ahead of a lot of other stuff in this video. That legal battle with the other Hispano Suiza could make things a little bit tricky, but I'd give the Carmen a solid 80% chance of making it. Up next, we have the Aspark Owl. To wit, to woohoo, am I right, guys? Guys? This is Japan's contribution to the e-hypercar craze. It's got lots of horsepower. It can do naught to 60 in less than two seconds. Blah, blah, don't, don't care. care. Here's what I do like about it. It's really low. At just 99 centimeters tall, this may well be the lowest production car ever made. And do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? Free parking. Actually, we do need to talk about that acceleration figure because this isn't just hypercar fast, it's the fastest. Aspark is claiming a 0 to 60 time of 1.69 seconds, which if true is insane. Unfortunately, the only proof we have of this is this incredibly dodgy video, which appears to have been filmed on an actual potato. I mean, what is happening in this video? What, you couldn't afford a test track for the day, so you just use the backyard of an industrial estate? What were the instructions to the driver? Yeah, just start over there in between the forklift and the gas canisters and try to brake before you hit the building. 
So is the Aspark going to happen? Well, to be honest with you, I was quite dubious for quite a long time, partly because of that very sketchy video, partly because they first unveiled it back in 2017, and I sort of figured they would have done it by now. But I was mainly dubious about the owl because of Aspark's highly questionable website, which features this actual passage of text. An hypercar with great performances, but never shouty or edgy. Capable to convey femininity and luxury feel. In the exterior, the volumes are soft, crossed with tension. Two external mirrors that perfectly mix with the charm of the car. The shape of side glass is more functional for the driver. The spoiler can operate automatically or manually. Now, clearly that was written in a different language and then whacked through the old Google Translate. I understand that, but it just didn't inspire my confidence as to the legitimacy of the Aspark brand. But get this, they actually did it. The owl happened. There is an actual Aspark dealership in Osaka, Japan, and production has already begun of the 50 unit production run, allegedly. Of course, the only way we can be sure is if Aspark were to fly me out to Japan and invite me for a test drive. Let's move on to the Hyperion XP1. Uh, okay, just straight off the bat, let me be very clear. This one ain't happening. How do I know? Well, for one, look at it. This car is what would happen if Aquaman was in charge of Pimp My Ride. The wheels appear to have been inspired by Neptune's Trident and the exhaust pipes by a starfish's bumhole. Or mouth? Are they the same thing on a starfish? Let me know in the comments. Yes, you heard me, exhaust pipes, which brings me to the second reason that this car ain't gone happen. It's hydrogen powered. Now, I actually did a very detailed video all about hydrogen cars just the other week. None of you watched it, it's fine, not upset. But the gist of that video was that hydrogen may well go on to have applications in energy storage and commercial vehicles, but it's not really going to happen as far as passenger cars. It's too difficult to work with, too expensive, and currently there's about nine places in the UK where you can get a tank of the stuff. Now, in fairness to Hyperion, which is a very legitimate company that specializes in hydrogen energy and sells components to NASA, nowhere on their website do they actually say that they are planning on building this thing. I think it's just intended to showcase what could be possible in a future where we have hydrogen supercars, which, again, we won't. The chances are we will never see a Hyperion XP1 on the road, but fair play to them for this outrageous piece of design. I mean, look at this thing. It looks absolutely wild from the front, and check out this cabin featuring a, wait for it, 98-inch curved display. It's a work of pure fiction. It's never going to make it to production, but it's pretty sweet. Okay, let's move on to the Dem Dembodom D1. Dem... Dem Dom... Dem Dembodom? Dom... Dem... Dom Dembedem? Dendrobium D1. Now, in the sea of new electric hypercars being unveiled, the D1 immediately caught my attention when it was unveiled, purely because of the people behind it. Dendrobium is headed up by a guy called Nigel Gordon Stewart, who, along with several other senior staff members at Dendrobium, was part of the team that created the McLaren F1, aka the greatest ICE supercar of all time. When those guys say they're making a new car, you pay attention. I mean, just look how extreme this thing is. It looks more like a Le Mans prototype than something you could drive to Tesco. The entire thing is made out of carbon fiber. It makes a preposterous amount of downforce, mostly thanks to ground effects. That's those fins that run the length of the underside of the car. It's got four motors, it's got 1800 horsepower, and it's not. <laughs> yep, sadly, it looks like Dendrobium has joined the e-hypercar graveyard. Despite some very promising signs at first, things have gone awfully quiet on the Dendrobium website and socials in the last couple of years, and CEO Nigel Gordon Stewart, according to LinkedIn, no longer works there. Sadly, it seems that COVID may have killed this British hypercar before it was ever born. Damn you, bats! Okay, we finish with one of the more recent and unusual additions to the plethora of obscenely fast electric stuff the Draco GTE. Unusual in that it's not really a hypercar, it's more a hyper GT. I mean, seriously, if you think a Porsche Taycan Turbo S is a great way of making your entire family and dog throw up at once, get a load of this. Lovely image. The GTE is a comfy four-door family car with 1,200 horsepower and a top speed of 206 miles an hour. I mean, 
That is ridiculous. The only other thing with four doors that can get near that performance is of course the incoming Tesla Model S Plaid. And just take a look at this thing. It is most definitely one of my favorite pieces of car design from the last few years. Somehow it manages to simultaneously be understated yet incredibly menacing. There's no monster rear wing on the back or no aggressive carbon splitter at the front. To the untrained eye, this could just be another big comfy family car. But to those who are paying attention, you'll notice the enormous vents on the front. You'll notice that ultra wide stance, those thick tires and that little rear diffuser poking out the back that tell you what this car is really about. And it's just the same inside where the interior is mostly standard comfy family car except for this very scary looking panel down here in the middle, which looks like it could have come straight out of a Formula One car. There you'll find four Manatinos, which control various drive modes and traction control and all the scary stuff. I love this thing. I mean, I know it makes very little sense. After all, the performance is roughly the same as a Model S Plaid, which costs about a tenth as much. But it's just so cool. 25 units of this car have been promised. Will they happen? I really hope so. I'm feeling hopeful for this one. They've released some really great testing videos quite consistently of late, many of which featuring the legendary Lamborghini test driver, Valentino Balboni. Anything with him in, I'm sold. Fingers crossed this thing becomes a reality because for me, it's a contender for coolest electric car ever made. And there we have it. Those are five shiny new electric hypercar brands and the cars that they are promising us. Let me know down below, which of these do you most want to see on the road? Which electric hypercar did I forget to mention in this video? Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you soon.